My most recent project has been this 18th century serpentine chest. As always, I start a project like this in SketchUp. Here is the detailed SketchUp model. It's a difficult piece and the serpentine shape is a big contributor to the complexity. It also has these canted corners covered in a fret and these features are a challenge. I'd like to show you how a piece like this is constructed and SketchUp provides a unique way to show the process of assembly. We'll start with a side component and this would be also the starting point in the shop. Here in SketchUp is a list of all the components in this chest. And this is where I'll select the parts to complete the assembly. The next stage of construction will be the drawer frames. These frames connect to the side in one quarter inch deep dados. The dados stop short of piercing the front edge, so there is little notch at the front corners of the frame. I'll pick a point for the movement and connect it to the associated point. The frame is an assembly of four components, all connected with mortise and tenon joints. I'll pull that style out and you can see the tenons and, and the mortises. And then undo This same frame is duplicated in two more locations, so I use the Move tool to copy and position the frames. These are not equally spaced, and the drawers decrease in height from bottom to top. So to hold the copied frame on the blue axis, I hit the upper arrow key and then touch the dado, the top edge of the dado, and it knows exactly where to connect. There is a unique top frame as it has shank holes for screws that fasten the top to the case. These frames are, are glued to the side dados only at the front end to allow the sides to expand and contract with weather. The top frame is also screwed to the side with slotted screw shank holes to allow this movement. Now we can copy the existing side to the other end of the chest. I need to flip that on the red axis to get the mirror image. There is one more frame, and that's the base frame. And it's different than the other frames. Let me get this side just positioned properly. So the base frame is different in that it overhangs the sides and is serpentine shaped on three sides and it also has a molded edge. It's fastened to the case by screws from the bottom into the ends, the lower ends of the sides. Uh 
let me position this about where it needs to be. First, I'll move it along the green axis. I'm using the arrow keys to help force the movement on these axes. There it's moved on the red. Now it, it's not in its final position. I need to bring in the back panel to help locate the final position of this base frame. So there are two halves to the back panel. And these have typical panel construction with a floating beveled panel in grooves in the styles and rails. There's a little notch here, a little rabbit in the style that fits right there. There you can see that slotted square screw shank hole for the top, top frame I mean. Now I can pull this base frame out to its final position so I have to move it on the green axis. That's the left arrow key to force it. And then I can just move my mouse over to the surface there to position that exactly where it needs to be. So I've got one back panel and I need to copy that. And these back panels are screwed to the drawer frames and to the sides, so it, they help to hold the back together. I used Monterey Pine for these secondary wood and these back panels. It's quite a contrast against the mahogany for the rest of the cabinet. Note this big rebate in the face of the side at the front. A shaped, a shaped piece is scarfed in here to create the canted corner. So let me grab that piece and get where I can see it better. Well, I'll bring it over here and, and bring it up. So it's got this coved shape and it sits right in this uh, rebate in the side. It's it's glued and screwed in place. The screws are coming from the inside face of the side. And then it has this fretwork. Let me pull that apart so you can see the fretwork. It's about 3 30 seconds thick that's glued onto the face of that corner. I need to copy that scarf over to the opposite corner. So again, I need to flip along the red axis. And grab a corner and connect to the matching corner. A lot of this movement has to do with precise positioning of common corners of components. Now you can see, well, let me zoom in down here at the bottom. You can see how all these shapes kind of come together uh, on this corner uh, detail.
Now we're missing the feet. So the front feet are a complicated assembly with curved surfaces that are carved. And also there's a miter joint strengthened with a, sp a spline. So you can see the two pieces here that are shaped differently, actually. I'll pull it apart. You can see how they, there are three Actually, there are four pieces. There's a fret piece also on the front face of out at, out at the corner. And their carvings are on those curved surfaces. There's a little register mark on the foot assembly that helps me position this properly. So I grab it with the move tool and then go to the mid point in that molding. Next is the back foot. It is also carved. But it's much simpler than the front assembly. It's just one piece. And these are screwed from the bottom uh, and also from the uh, top of the base frame. And the back foot is also reinforced with a separate brace. So I need to grab that brace and bring it in here. And that's screwed into the mating pieces there. I'll copy both of these feet then to the other side. Select both holding the shift key, pick the move tool, and go down the red axis, hit the right arrow key, flip along red direction, and Pick a common point of connection there, and that should be, yes, that's, that's right. Next are the drawers, and I'll start with the deepest lower drawer assembly. These drawers are also very complex with many pieces. And they have a border of ebony cockbead that I've shown in black here. And actually that cockbead is not does not have a flat surface on the top. It is rounded with little sc scraper blades that I make. Now that, that ebony is proud, should be proud of the surface, so I need to bring it out to where it's, to its final position right about there. All drawers are equipped with locks and little brass key inserts that are pounded in from the front surface. I covered detailed drawer construction in a previous blog entry, so I won't bother here to pull these things apart. 
to show all the various pieces. And each of these drawers are different in their height. I'll stop inserting the drawers and move to the final part, which is the top. And the top is shaped on front and side edges. And the edges are all beautifully molded. That had to be done with a lot of hand tools. To center that top, I'm going to grab its center and then move it along the red axis and connect to that center line that you can see in the back panels. And that top is fastened from the, with screws from the top frame. But I need to pull it out on the green axis for its proper overhang. And that's, that's all the parts except for those missing two drawers that I'll complete here. It's a fun piece to do, but difficult. <laughs>